105.7 FM Ipswich Community Radio. Joining me now in the studio are Izzy Lane and Peter Edwards from the book Crossing Name. So if you like reading but you can't always get to the library, there is another way of borrowing books absolutely free. It's called The Book Crossing and to find out more we're joined now by two book crossers, Lizzie Lane and Peter Edwards. So good morning Izzy and Peter and welcome to the studio. Good morning, and, <laughs> and it's lovely to have you here too. Um, so I just wondered if you could um, just start by telling us a little bit about um, book crossing and, um, and how it works. Well, the, the basic idea is you kind of get a book and you go to the book, book crossing website, which is bookcrossing.com, really easy to remember, and you register the book on the site, and then you can leave it in a public place somewhere, and hopefully somebody else will pick it up. And when they pick it up, they can read it and they can go on the website and put down what they think about it, put, put down where they found it, where they picked it up, stuff like that. And um, so you can track the book and who's read it and who's enjoyed it, who's hated it, all that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's good fun. And it's absolutely free, isn't it? There's, there's no charge associated with it. So um... No, not none whatsoever. Um, I mean, the fantastic thing about it is that um, if you want to get involved, you can get, um, you know, buy lots of stickers and book labels and stuff like that, which you can stick into the books themselves. Um, or alternatively, all you have to do is get access to the internet. Um, you generate a little ID uh, from the website for every book that you want to release, and then you can just literally write that inside the name of the book, inside the front cover, um, the the ID, along with uh, a link to the bookcrossing.com website. Yes. And that's what people, when they find the book, can use to go back and sort of stick the number in the website, and that means that they can then leave comments and stuff about the book you found, that and, they found. And the internet makes it so accessible these days, doesn't it? it, it just opens up a wide range of people that otherwise you perhaps wouldn't uh, kind of be able to tap into. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that it's absolutely worldwide. I mean, it was started in America. It came out to this country about 10 years ago. 2001 was when it started, I believe. I've and done my research. You've done your research. <laughs> I'm glad one of us had. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, some of the books can travel absolutely internationally, uh, depending on where you leave them and who finds them and, and where people are travelling, of course. I mean, sometimes people take them on holiday and things like that. So, so yeah, absolutely. OK, and um, how long have you both been involved in the book club, Peter? Uh, oh, mm. well, it started in 2001, so I think I probably heard about it first in about 2002, 2003. Um, I, I think originally I was actually browsing around on the internet, and there's another website called Project Gutenberg, which gives um, uh, free books, e-books. Uh -huh. um, so people digitise the whole of the, uh, the book and sort of just give it away as a text file for free. Um, so I think I found it through that originally. Um, and I, I, after I found out about it, I did absolutely nothing about it whatsoever and just ignored it for another year or so. But a year after that, I had a big pile of books in my, uh, in my room that I really needed to start getting rid of. So I sent off for some book labels from the bookcrossing.com store after reading a bit more about it and did absolutely nothing about it again for another year. Um, and then eventually they finally turned up and I was like, yeah, this pile of books is growing bigger and bigger. I can't open my door to my room anymore. Maybe I should do something about this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, at that point I, I released a few books in the new official book crossing zone, which had been set up in uh, Cafe Nero in the centre of Ipswich. Um, and the rest, as they say, is history. Uh -huh. And um, and Izzy, what about you? Um, well, mine, mine's a bit different because I, I moved to Ipswich about five years ago now and um, I kind of didn't know very many people and I was in Cafe Nero and I saw the books and we have a, a leaflet in there saying about the books and what to do with them and the fact that there's a meeting, there's a, um, people in Ipswich meet uh, every Saturday, first Saturday, no, second Saturday of the month, let's get this right, <laughs> second Saturday of the month, and uh, that was advertised in the leaflet, and I thought, oh, this is a good way to meet some people, because I like reading and I like books, and I, w I went along um, thinking that kind of if they were a bunch of really weir weirdos, because it, it was in Cafe Nero and it's a public place, I could kind of go, oh, no, not for me, but actually they turned out to be a really nice group of people, and I'm really pleased to have met them, um, so, yeah. No. Do, we, do we go to the same meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's probably worth pointing out as well, although the meeting started in Cafe Nero, we ended up switching at some point, just for the sake of it, I think. Um, we're now meeting in uh, Coffee Link on the, the docks. Uh, so. Neptune Key. Neptune Key, indeed. In the the marina. So, and, and there will be a meeting tomorrow, starting about 12 o'clock. And, and we're really easy to spot, because we're at the, the table that's covered in books. So, um, and there's, a, there's also a book crossing zone at the Greyhound pub. But the, I mean, book crossing zones are just pl places where people put books and there normally is a kind of supply of books. Um, there's a couple of us who try to keep Cafe Nero supplied, although they do disappear sometimes quite quickly from Cafe Nero. 
So you've got you've got three main venues in Ipswich, and you've got um, the Coffee Link, which is at the um, the waterfront, which you talked about. You've also got the Greyhound Pub, which is um, which is along Henley Road, and you've got Cafe Nero, which is um, which is down at the bottom of Henley. Yeah, th- those are three book crossing zones where people leave books, and as I say we try to keep them supplied with books. Um, but we meet in Coffee Link on Neptune Quay. But the great thing about book crossing is you don't actually have to go to an official zone or anything to leave your books, anything. I mean, we have a lot of what are called wild releases. Yes. Um, and people can just like put them inside a, a little kind of see-through plastic bag um, and just leave them wherever they feel it might get picked up. So you have people who do like themed releases. So for instance, they might put up um, a book about planes. They might leave it in an airport. Um, or ditto trains in a train station. So, oh, I, I mean, the great thing about this thing is that you could literally be walking along anywhere at all and find these um, books absolutely anywhere that a book crosser has decided that would be a good place to put a book. Um, and and I, I actually brought four with me. I thought I'd leave them in reception as we left. <laughs> so I guess I guess with these books, it's kind of what, what goes around comes around, doesn't it? I mean, they're just continually in circulation and um, people are having the opportunity to read things that perhaps they wouldn't normally rush out to a bookshop and buy. Yeah, it's really weird actually that sometimes when you release these things you don't hear anything from them at all and it can be years before you hear from them again and then they'll suddenly pop up again somewhere else. Um, could be anywhere on the globe. Um, I mean, I've, I've certainly heard stories of these these books which have been released in one place and then they've disappeared off the radar so people have thought they've either been discovered by a cleaner or something and thrown away and they've kind of written them off. Um, and then something like two or three years later, they'll pop up on the other side of the globe in Australia um, because somebody has picked them up, taken it away on holiday, just kind of been sitting on it and not doing an awful lot for a while. Um, and then just suddenly finally got round to finish reading it and then they journal it on the website um, and just surprise whoever it was that originally released it that it's still going and it's still out there. <laughs> Katie had one, didn't she, that's popped up after four years. Gosh. So it's- so people must kind of discover the book and see the thing inside the front cover and then that's kind of how they, they get into it and they, they pass the book on and that's how it keeps alive. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. S- some people are, are sort of, you know, really get into it, love the idea of it and actually sign up to the website and start releasing their own. But, I mean, it do- you don't even have to do that. I mean, you can um, quite easily find one of these books, put the idea in the website and leave a comment without actually signing up or doing anything more. You know, you just, you're just one little part of the life of that one particular book. Um, so the, 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 I mean, the advantage about having a, a signing up for the ID and stuff is that you can then track your books. But yeah, as Pete says, you can leave comments absolutely anonymously, and that's really simple to do on the website. So have, um, have either of you left a book in a really strange place? I, I haven't particularly. Most of mine go to the meeting or the book crossing zone, or I, I occasionally post books because um, you can put on the uh, website a wish list of books you're looking for, and I'll check if people are looking for books that I've got. Yes. So I have posted some, but no, most of them. And the oddest one I had was somebody from Argentina co- contacted me about a book that I'd got, because you mark the books as being to be read or available or stuff, and I'd got this marked as available, and, and he got in touch with me and said, I'm really keen to have that book, so I posted it to Argentina. But, it's, but it, it's, I didn't leave it anywhere particularly weird. So. Um, well, the, the weirdest one that I've probably left is not that weird, it's more humiliating, really, rather than the other. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, the, one of the other things I do is uh, a little game called geocaching, which I, I started probably around the same time as I was doing book crossing. And that one's a bit like a treasure hunt or a scavenger hunt. Um, and you go looking for uh, little bases that, that, that people have left behind and they provide GPS coordinates on a website, geocaching.com. Um, so for this one, um, I, I discovered that there was, there was a large cache, um, and by large I mean it was physically a large ammunition kind of box, a big yes. metal thing, and it was stored uh, somewhere in Rendlesham Forest at the time. Um, now this was quite a few years ago, so as a technology early adopter, I was sort of trying all these things out. Um, and I thought, this sounds like a good idea, I'll go and do this. And I thought, I'm going to combine book crossing and geocaching, um, and I'm going to leave one of my books, which is registered, I'm going to leave it in this ammo cache, so that the next person who goes to the ammo cache will be able to see this book, and if they want to, pick it up and take it. I thought, how nerdy can that be? Great. <laughs> <laughs> so I set up and I, par- I parked in Rendlesham Bar- Car Park, and at which point I sort of had to dig out all of my geocaching stuff, as well as all my book crossing stuff. So I ended up having a... PDA, a really old PDA. I had a GPS receiver brick over here. I had an A4 piece of paper with the coordinates and all the information about where this geocache was to be found. I had a book crossing book under one arm and a big clutch of pens. And I ended up stumbling around Rendlesham Forest with um, basically looking like an extra from Star Trek, <laughs> one of the red shirts who gets shot on the landing party very quickly. Um, so I dread to think what people were looking at with me holding stuff and just wandering around. 
I don't know, looking like I was water dousing probably or something. Um, yeah, so... It, it's I suspect, probably the reason for all the, the sightings of aliens I in Mendelssohn Forest. Like most people thought I was a UFO hunter, yes. <laughs> for anyone who did see me on that day about three or four years ago, no, I, I was looking for a box. And it was there, I did find it. Did I, find I, it. I signed it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard from that book again, though. And I, I suspect that maybe just because nobody has ever found that cash again, but there you go. Now, um, Rendlesham Forest is um, it's well renowned, isn't it, for sort of weird sightings. So I'm sure if anybody, <laughs> anybody did see you in your in your get up, then uh, they might have raised a few eyebrows. I, I did think that if anyone, if if I was going to do that anywhere, Rendlesham Forest was a particularly good place to do it. So yes, it wasn't too bad at the time. And the great thing now is that because everything's getting smaller and miniature, I mean, the big huge set of equipment that I had for all this stuff, it's all been replaced by my mobile phone now. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to put that on silent. <laughs> it was. <laughs> oh, that's an alarm to make sure I'm not late. Um. <laughs> okay, so I mean, I mean, with the book crossing, there's there's no time limit on how long somebody can keep a book to read it. Is there, and or is there a kind of guide for how long you should have the book? Um, no, absolutely no, not. No. I mean, I think it's one of the things about giving the books away is it's pretty par for the course that you know when you're when you're handing it out and making the book free which is half of the ethos, you really have no idea what's going to happen to it. And, you know, there are people who will take the book, sit on it and do absolutely nothing. Um, and, you know, some people get really annoyed when they find that someone's taken one of their books and sold it on eBay or something. But at the end of the day, that's all par for the course as far as, you know, you, you are giving the book away. Um, and, you know, it's perfectly possible to find book crossing books in charity shops and things like that. Um, and to be honest, I, th I think most book crossers would rather that their book ended up in a charity shop and was being resold again for charity. Yes. Um, and you know, and still has the book crossing idea because at the end of the day, that means somebody's going to find it and is going to journal it again. Um, so yeah, I, mean, I think as long as you play by the ethos of, you know, the, you're, you're getting something for free. Yeah, the only, the only one that is kind of frowned on is selling them for, for profit. It's yes. okay to sell them in charity shops, but, but yeah, actually kind of flogging it on eBay is generally frowned upon. It just defeats the object yeah. of the whole exercise, yeah, doesn't it, really? Yeah, it's meant to be free. But yeah, no, I mean, people do sit on them for months with, without reading them, because we all a bit collect books. You end up with a, a mountain of to-be-read books, and, and it, it can take a while for people to get through them. But. And some people are very protective about books. I mean, they might have a book that's kind of their favourite book and they, they really enjoy reading that book and they don't want to part with it once they've kind of read it. I mean, you do get people like that, don't you, from time to time? Well, you can keep a book. Um, I, I had a couple of Ladybird books that um, I, I actually took along to a meeting and somebody came with her, her young son and he loved them. So she's actually marked them as permanent collection and, and she's keeping them, um, presumably, until he grows out of using them or they fall apart because they were only second-hand Ladybird books anyway. So, yeah, I mean, if, if you really love a book, then... You just say it's permanent collection. You don't pass it on. Um, I mean, obviously, it's nice if people journal it before they do hang yes. on to them. But, but yeah. And Izzy, you've you brought along one or two books today, haven't you? Ones yeah. That you're, are they books you're reading or, or you're going to read? Um, two of them I've read. Um, two of them I've just uh, got. I bought really cheaply, so they're just four that I'm ready to release and they're they're ready to go. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's a Red Dwarf, uh, Flatterland, which follows on from Flatland. Eddie Stobart's story and uh, Split Second, which is by uh, Alex Kaya. Have you given any of them a mission? No, I haven't given any of them a mission. Ah, okay. Because so you, you can release these things and sort of um, try and give them an idea of where you want them to end up, which is quite good. So uh, you can say, for instance, I'm going to leave this somewhere near an airport and I'd like it to go as far away from the UK as possible. And no, I was, I was just going to leave them in reception and hopefully people will pick them oh, up and journal them. So, 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 so the listeners so, yeah. can storm so, yeah. the building. Yes. So, yeah. wow. so if you fancy any of those books, they'll be in the ICR reception. Come and get them. Well, Eddie Stobart's um, probably well worth reading, isn't he? The, um, the Trucking Empire. Um, yeah. Thing. So, um, yeah, might be people that are interested in that one particularly, yes. I, I would yes. think. Have, have you had a chance to say everything that you'd like to say about, about the book crossing, or is there anything else you'd like to, to throw in? Um, I think that's, that's probably probably everything, to be well, honest. Yeah, th I mean, th 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 there's an email list as well that you can join. I mean, there's quite a lot of stuff you can join. There's a BC UK, it's a Yahoo group. You yeah, I mean, you can get involved there, if you want to get um, involved. You know, there's a community there if you want to get involved. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, effectively, if you you know fancy meeting up and finding out more about it, we're going to be meeting at Coffee Link at, is it, uh, 12 o'clock tomorrow. 12, yeah. At Coffee Link uh, on and the And if, if you can't make tomorrow, we're there second Saturday every month. So come along join in. Okay, and there's, um, there's also a website which um, you've, you've kindly given us, and that's um, www.bookcrossing.com. So if people yep. do want to, um, to find out a little bit more without contacting you first, then they can always go to the website, can't they? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, Peter and Izzy, thank you very much for coming to the studio. It's been a very...